Hello, this is OG. Well, hello there, Mama Joe. How are you doing today? Uh, uh, you're not doing so good? Why, why is that? Well, that's terrible. So you say some hoodlum kids came along and uh, threw your table and chairs on your patio all over the place, huh? Well, yeah, you, you, these kids these days, man, I, I I don't know what to say. This is just terrible. Uh, but anyway, uh, other than that, uh, to what do I owe this uh, this pleasure? Ha have I heard of the uh, fast food chain Lettuce Wraps Are Us? Uh, yeah, I've I've heard of them. I, I've even gone uh, gone and had a lettuce wrap uh, a time or two. So, uh, yeah. Oh, your 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 cousin Butch is the is is a big executive with the Lettuce Wraps Are Us. And you say they're um, planning on um, building several stores in the area, and they're looking to locally source lettuce for their stores. Well, that sounds interesting. So, uh, the, oh, so they've heard about me, and uh, I, I'm the the top lettuce producer in the region, and they're interested in doing business with me. Well, that that sounds very interesting. So, what's what's the what's the basic idea here? Okay, so they want me to supply lettuce to them, um, and I'm going to probably need to double or even triple my production. They're willing to uh, pay for all the landscaping costs to get set up, and then they will also come in and, and pick up the lettuce, so I don't even have to deliver it at 10% below the market price. That sounds like it's probably a pretty good idea. That uh, They'll take... They'll take my tomatoes too. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah, I think uh, Mama Joe, maybe we can uh, put something together and uh, and and help supply lettuce wraps. Are us? That sounds great. Okay, so yeah, we'll um, I'll, I'll meet up with with you and your cousin Butch uh, tomorrow, and we'll sit down and drop the papers and and get this rolling. Sounds good. All right, we'll see you soon. Bye bye.
We are finally finished with our massive, massive greenhouse upgrade. Now, um, you might be wondering why I did that instead of doing the uh, fermenting silos. And the answer to that is we are still going to also do the fermenting silos. Um, so what what's basically going to happen here is... Here, I want to load these eggs up here and get them out of the way. Um... Loading area is full. Oh, really? Okay, hold on a sec. Let's just manually load these other two pallets. Um, with what I okay, so there's, there's a few things I gotta actually talk about here. Let's get this up here first. Um, I'm gonna I'm actually gonna sell all these chickens in this in this greenhouse and put two new greenhouses over by. Keeps, when it, as soon as I get it over the truck, it drops it. Just need to get it on there enough for, for it to stay on there. Uh, now it's not letting me do the strap. Okay, well, let's just... 
<laughs> Let's see if we can get it over there. If we drop it, we'll just come back for it. I mean, it's only one pallet of eggs. What what could possibly go wrong if it drops on the ground? Anyway, um, yeah, there's a few things we 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 got to go over. Um, but I'm changing my mo uh, for the rest of this series. What? Yeah, everything that we just did, that huge, um, what was it, 560 some odd thousand dollar investment that I made to do all this is going to hugely pay off um, in a couple of ways. Uh, whoop, there it goes. It's going to pay off monetarily because I'm, I'm estimating that we are going to average probably somewhere around $120,000 a month. Um, with, with what we have set up. And as you uh, probably noticed in the montage there, I have also now set everything to auto sell. I'm, I'm not, I'm no, I'm done spending hours and hours, even though, you know, auto drive made it better in January, moving those pallets around. It just takes so long. Now the way the game currently works, it used to not be this way, but the way it works now, and I can adjust this too, by the way, is that if you sell product from your your uh, production directly from the production you basically take a 10 percent hit as if you went and sold it yourself but 10 percent if you if you consider all of the effort you know that it takes where's that other pallet at to do all that and plus you know i'm i'm simulating paying work well yeah simulating paying workers no let me rephrase that i have simulated workers that i am in actuality paying <laughs> Um, 10% is not really that bad if you think about it. Um, so since we've massively expanded uh, our production and set it to automatically sell, we don't got to mess with it anymore. All I have to do is just make sure, you know, I keep the seeds, the manure and the water in there going. And, you know, it's going to be a lot more expensive now, of course, to do that. But it's, it's so going to pay off, I think. And so what that means is a couple of things. It means that I am, for the most part, uh, I'm, you know, I, I'm not the type of person to never say never, okay? But for the most part, I'm done doing contracts. Um, I might still do a contract now and then, but, but I, you know, I've got such a big farm here, and, you know, with that much money coming in every month, I don't really need to do the contracts anymore. And... The money, you know, from the contracts and the extra hay we get is nice, but it's a lot of work. I mean, we're talking several hours of real time to do all those contracts every time, and uh, we just—I just don't feel like we need to do that anymore. Which means we're going to be able to start progressing even faster uh, in the series as we're, you know, I, I don't know when I'm going to end this series, but we we are getting to the towards the end. It's not going to happen overnight, but you know, we're definitely, in my opinion, in the end game, or at least just now starting to get into the end game um so yeah i, I just want to kind of uh accelerate i guess is the word our progress here on the farm uh, and really you know get into some of the end game stuff and buy some of the high-end equipment and just have fun with that part of the game without me having to spend hours and hours and hours of real lifetime you know doing those doggone contracts every year um, because it, you know, it, it, we're at the point now where doing the contracts is going to start to be kind of diminishing returns for us with the amount of time it's going to take to do it. Okay. So a couple things I want to show you. If we go into here, um, I have a mod installed and, and have had it and there, there, and it's been updated. There's been a bunch of updates, uh, but the production revamp mod. And what this allows me to do is a few things. Uh, it allows you to set, you know, what level. Uh, you want someone to be able to buy from a production, but that doesn't really matter to us. That That's really more of a multiplayer thing, I believe. There's a priority system. Um, so you can give certain products a higher priority than others if you want them to be distributed first. Okay. I don't think we need to worry about that, but that, that is it is an option. Uh, the mission fix. It says the mission fix that when supplying own productions, they do not go in to the own warehouse can be deactivated here. So basically what this is supposed to do, and maybe it works better now because things have been updated, is that if one of my productions is the um, the contract's you know, drop-off point, I don't actually get the product. I just get the money and the bonus. 
Um, so that's what that does. And then correction of purchase prices. Uh, adjustment of purchase prices to the difficulty level can be deactivated here. And I want to talk uh, in specifically about the manure situation uh, here in just a bit too. Uh, so, so basically, I guess what this does is it, it adjusts the price based upon my difficulty level. Distribution cost factor. Uh, let's come back to that. A direct selling price factor. So basically, this is what determines how much um, I'm going to get from the product with it being automatically sold. Now, you know, we're role playing that. Um, what, what did I call it? Uh, lettuce, lettuce wraps are us. <laughs> I come up with the weirdest stuff. Uh, they're going to come out every month and get the product um, themselves. Uh, but the deal was they come and get it, but they get it at a 10% below price discount. So that's basically what this number here is. Uh, so you can adjust this. You you know, you could raise it or lower it if you wanted to, but I, I think that's fair, you know, 10%, um, except for it should really be nine um, there. So basically we're getting 90% of the purchase price. Um, but you know, we're not, like I said, we're not having to do all the work that we've had to do before to, to deliver it. So that's good. Okay. So, um, that, okay. Let's talk about distribution cost factor. Now I, th you, you know how I'm always forgetting to, 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 uh, pay my pallet worker. I think we can use this to automatically deduct money for distributing the pallets. Now, a couple of things about that. Um, well, one thing in particular we're no longer going to be moving massive amounts of lettuce and tomatoes and strawberries to the warehouse because the, that, uh, that stuff's now going to be just sold automatically in a role playing sense. It's going to get picked up by the people from lettuce wraps are us. <laughs> uh, but, but it's just, you know, it's just, we don't, that stuff's not, not going to be moved anymore. So I don't have to pay somebody to move that, but we're still going to have, um, you know, theoretically, right. Role-playing, uh, our farm hand or hands moving pallets from our other productions into the warehouse. And somebody, you know, is actually going to have to manage the greenhouses in terms of, you know, you know, picking the crop and, you know, putting them in the, in the, uh, in the packages and that sort of thing. So we're going to kind of, instead of, you know, saying that we've got a, a pallet moving employee, um, we're, we're going to say that individual uh, and or crew is now, you know, basically our uh, greenhouse manager. Cause we have so many greenhouses now where we basically need somebody to look after them full time. Now I'm going to still have to do the water fertilizer and, uh, and seed because there's no way to really automate that, that I know of anyway, maybe there is, I don't know, but uh, we're going to change that. So I don't know exactly what this factor does. Um, for example, does one mean it, charges me 1% kind of thing. So we're going to have to experiment with this a little bit, but, uh, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll work with this until I get it to the point where it's deducting, you know, a reasonable amount of money each month to pay our workers essentially. So that way I don't have to worry about continuing to remember to have to do that. Okay. So that's what that's about. I, I can tell you right now that one is definitely not even close to high enough. So why don't we, why don't we just start with 10 and we'll, you know, we'll see what that does and then adjust up or down again accordingly. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's see here. Um, I think that's all we need to talk about there. Now, I switched over my strawberry, my big strawberry greenhouse to another lettuce greenhouse and set up, as you guys saw in the montage there, a, 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 just a small strawberry greenhouse over by the bakery because I still need strawberries to be distributed to the bakery, uh, you know, to make the cakes. But strawberries, you know, I, I wanted to turn this big warehouse into lettuce because lettuce is going to be, you know, the more profitable thing. <clears throat> well, actually, arguably, maybe not, though, because especially if you're auto selling. Supposedly, the three, you know, base game produce items more or less turn out, you know, to the same money. The, it's just that if you're manually dealing with stuff like we've been up to this point, the strawberries are a lot you, there's a lot more of them, which means you have to handle them a lot more for the same amount of money. So I don't know, it, whatever, it doesn't matter. So I, I just chained, I, I just added a small strawberry greenhouse solely to distribute strawberries to the bakery and then converted this one over to a lettuce. Now we're going to keep the tomato warehouse too, just for role playing purposes, um, because lettuce wraps are us, uh, want us to provide a little bit of tomatoes to them too, even though lettuce is their primary thing. 
Okay, so that, uh, I think that explains all of that. Now, the deal with the manure on the new greenhouses, let's go look at that. Um, I, I don't, I haven't edited anything I've done yet, so I'm not sure if, if I'm going to explain this much in the montage, but basically, if we look at the price of manure, the market, you know, the market for manure right now is, you know, the average price is somewhere around, you know, $36 per thousand liters. So basically, uh, three, 3.6 cents. Um, and it, it, it tops out at 36. So I just went with that number there. The thing is though, is if you buy the manure directly, uh, into the warehouse, which you can do, and, and I started to do that, but it, it occurred to me that the price for this is, um, well, it's not let, it's not let, it's not showing it cause it's completely full. But if you remember from the montage, it was like $65. It was like twice as much to purchase the, the manure directly than it was, you know, for the market. And I'm going, no way, man, I'm not going to pay double price for that. Uh, I mean, maybe the reason for that is so that, you know, because someone's coming to deliver it for you. And I guess I could, I could see that, but still not double the price. I mean, forget that. So I just used the, you know, the admin tool and spawned in the manure that I needed uh, and went and basically paid 3.6 cents per liter. And I was getting, I think, 18,500 liters per load. And then, it, so if you multiply that by a 3.6, it came out to 666, which is <laughs> like, what the heck's up with that? Uh, but that's what it comes out to mathematically. And so, you know, I, I think I spawned in like maybe three or four loads and I paid, uh, and you saw this all in the montage, uh, I paid uh, 666 <laughs> for each load. So, yeah. Anyway, okay. It's just math. Uh, I'm not really a superstitious person, so I don't care. Anyway, uh, so I think that explains that, and yeah, so we, we're, we're in good shape. So I've got all the greenhouses set up to um, automatically sell, and again, I, I, I'm estimating that we're going to get probably somewhere around, uh, on the average, because you know, the price is going to fluctuate, uh, but on the average, about $120,000 a month. And I don't have to do anything at all except for, you know, once or twice a year, just make sure they have water seeds and manure in them. Now, I don't think that my little cattle farm is going to be able to support all of those greenhouses with the manure. But the reason I'm not 100% sure is because I usually end up with quite a bit of extra manure as the year progresses, and I, I end up using it for fertilizer contracts. So it might be able to actually keep up with it uh, or you know, at least keep up with most of it. And then whatever it can't keep up with, I'll just do the same thing. I'll just purchase more manure at market price, uh, you know, to top everything off as needed. So I just want to wait and see how this does. Uh, but it is in my plans and has been in my plans all along, as you guys know, if you've been watching all along, you know, that we are going to uh, upgrade this to the large cow barn at some point, but it's not going to happen this year because there's just too many other things going on right at the moment. Okay. So that explains all of that. Now, um, we still have $241,000, as you can see. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until we do our first hay cutting, which I think is going to be in March, before we purchase the uh, f uh, fermenting silos. Because we should have another, you know, a, a couple hundred thousand more dollars from the greenhouses by then. Uh, and then, you know, that way we can start purchasing them. The other thing about the fermenting silos, the ones that I'm going to get, they're, they're concrete stave silos. And they con the ones I'm going to get are $100,000 a pop, and they hold a little over 500,000 liters. So we don't have to buy them all at the same time either. We just, we'll just buy them as, you know, as we need to, uh, you know, as we fill them up throughout the year. Okay, so that's the plan for that. And so the last thing we're going to do right now is uh we're gonna switch the chickens over okay so let's um let's come back over here and let's also uh, do a game save and we're gonna hop into this menu here um actually hold on a sec before we do that let's go back over uh to the chickens i've got fast run on just because it was easier when i was doing all that stuff um yeah, what well, we actually need to sell these chickens. They're they're starting to get older anyways, so probably isn't a bad idea to sell them. Oh, you know what we're gonna do though is we're gonna 
We're gonna lose the food. No, you know what we're not gonna we're gonna do? We're gonna spawn in twenty-seven thousand well, not twenty-seven thousand. We're gonna spawn in two thousand seven hundred and twenty-four liters of grain and put it in a trailer, simulating us taking it out of here because in real life there would be a way for you to get the grain back out of there. Okay, so that's that's what we're gonna do in with that situation. Um, so what was that number again? 2724. Let me write that down. Okay. Because the the problem is, you know, if I if I sell this building, I I don't get the grain back. It it just goes poof. I don't even get the money for it. Uh, at least I don't think I do. Okay, so let's sell these chickens off and we'll buy some new chickens. So we want to select them and sell. Oh. Hold on. Uh, I need to do this, otherwise this is going to take forever. Okay, we want to sell 60 at a time. There we go. Okay, so that sells all the chickens. And now we're going to sell the, uh, the chicken building. Uh, this is also something that it, I, has been in the plans all along. And uh, now's the time for us to do it. Th meaning that we were going to move the chickens over here and add another chicken barn. Okay, so let's get back into this menu and just go back over here real quick. Click on that and we're going to sell that. That also frees up some space over here um, that we will probably at some point do something with uh, later on. Okay, now let's go into animals and chickens. And a long time ago, I don't know if you guys remember this or not, but a long time ago, I already kind of mapped out where these were going to go. And that's what these green squares are here. So we don't really have to think about this too terribly hard. Uh, but we do want to make sure that it looks good and it's straight and all that sort of thing. So that's where I had that. It's sort of kind of close to the road, but... Uh, oh, you know what else I wanted to do? I wanted to kind of level this out a little bit more, too. So let's do that first. Okay. How's that? That looks pretty good. All right. Now, let's go back to here. Grab the chickens. Grab the thingy -me doodle. No. Chickens. Yeah, that's right. Chickens. And we want to pretty much just put the little pasture right where the grass is, because that's where we had it before. I'm wondering, though, if I want to move in just a little bit to get so we're not right up against the road. Maybe right there. Okay. And then this one. Uh, has a little spot here, but what I want to actually do. All right, there we go. And this will, we should be able to drive through here to tip grain when, when we need to. And of course, there's lots of room over on this side. All right, very cool. Okay, now we just need to buy a bunch of chickens and buy a bunch of grain. Um, let's see, how much grain did the did the thing you owe me? So twenty seven twenty four is what we were owed. So let's see. I think what I'm the way I'm going to handle that is let's go into here, and we're going to go to. Here, right? No, here. All right, add pallet, farm products, general crops. It doesn't, uh, doesn't, well, yeah, I don't think it matters. Let's just go with wheat because that's what we had before. And I think this just adds a thousand liters. Okay, and let's also <clears throat> do the same thing over here. There it goes. All 
Okay, and then um, <clears throat> the game still owes me 724 more liters of wheat. So, I mean, I can't really specifically tell it. I, I guess I could do tip to the ground. Uh, that might make a mess, though. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to I'm gonna give myself a little extra bonus. It's just not worth messing around with. We'll put half of that in there and half that in there. There it goes. Okay. So, yeah, we, got, we gave ourselves a little extra bonus, but it's not that big a deal, really. Okay, so that gets uh, some food in there uh, just to get them started. Now, we uh, I had mentioned earlier at some point that we're, we'll be able to harvest our barley in April, but actually we, it's June. We have to wait till June, so I'll probably end up having to buy some more grain before then, but that's okay. It's not a big deal. It's not that expensive to do. So let's go ahead and load up with chickens. We're just going to do like we did last time. We're going to get the adult chickens, and we're just going to get hens. Roosters don't actually do anything. They're just kind of there for funsies, I guess. Um, so we want batches of 60. I wish we could buy them all at once, but it's not the way the game works. Okay, so... That gives us a, uh, whoops, a full, cut it out, uh, a full, uh, two full hen houses of chickens, and we just doubled our chicken production, or our egg production rather, and uh, that's gonna be good. So, yeah, we make, uh, we make around thirty, or are made around thirty thousand dollars a year off of one, uh, one hen house, and, and that was after you know the, we loaded the bakery up with, with eggs. Uh, so now, now we can expect around sixty thousand dollars a year. Fantastic. Okay, so yeah, that is pretty much it, you guys, for uh, for our upgrades. Except for, like I said, when March rolls around, I expect to have probably somewhere in the neighborhood of three hundred thousand dollars, and that will be enough for us to purchase uh, two fermenting silos. And my plan for that, if you're curious, is we're gonna sell. Uh, we're going to sell the round bale storage because uh, I'm not planning on using it anymore. Excuse me. And then I'm going to line up the silos kind of pretty much just along here. Um, I believe that's what I'm going to do. So that's the plan. Once we get all of the silage out of this bunker, I'm probably going to get rid of this bunker too because, you know, we'll we'll just have it in a silo moving forward and we, we don't even need to do this anymore. And that, that'll free up some space over here. Um, that I, I should be able to pick that up and just dump it in one of the fermenting silos. So yeah, we'll figure all that out. All right, guys, uh, have no idea where we are in terms of time because I've got a bunch of editing to do. So I think we're going to just go ahead and wrap up this episode here. And when I come back in the next episode, it will probably be March. Well, no, actually I will bring you back at the end of February to show you how much money we made off the greenhouses and we'll go from there. So uh, unless, like I said, I have a compelling reason to bring you back before then, I'll bring you back uh, at the end of February and we'll start the next episode at that point. Thanks guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share out the video, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.